Thank you so much for joining us online today here at Bayview Kids. We hope and pray that every single one of you would know and experience the love that God has for you. And if you have any questions or want to know more about what we do here at Bayview Kids, you can visit us at our website at bayviewglen.org kids. All right, now it's time to worship and learn more about God together. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about confidence while we take a look at the story of someone who had big questions. Hey, do you know what the best kind of armor to stop a piglin attack is? Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about confidence, which is living like you believe God is with you. What are we doing today? What do you think we should do? What about raising our game? Where should we start? How about at the beginning? Why don't you take the lead? Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> okay, stop. Too many questions. Except you can never have too many questions. Which is exactly where we're going today. Right. So what should you do with a question? Depends on your question. Point taken. Okay, so we're entering s'more season. Mmm, mm. s'mores. But you don't always have a campfire when the s'mores cravings hit. 
So I'm thinking maybe we could put a marshmallow in the microwave. Please form that phrase as a question, Sebastian. Um, what happens when you put a marshmallow in a microwave? Yes. Well done. You have just initiated the scientific method. The what? The scientific method. It's a great way to figure out how things work. Step one: ask a question. Already done. What happens when you put a marshmallow in the microwave? Step two: make a hypothesis. I've always thought a hypothesis sounds like a mythical creature. Duck. A hypothesis is a prediction you make based on what you've seen before. Well, a bonfire makes a marshmallow soft and mushy, so I think a microwave will make it melty. Kind of. Step three: conduct an experiment. Wait, is this the part where we put the marshmallow in the microwave? You bet. Yes. Let's, Let's do it. it. That is a serious marshmallow. Well, this is serious business. Ready? Ready. Commence experimentation. Whoa, it's puffing up. Yeah, it is. A lot. Wow, it's still puffing up. This is pretty wild. I wonder how big it's gonna get. How big it's getting. Oh, I can smell it. Step four: analyze your results. Wow, it looks like our marshmallow turned into the Hulk for a minute. It did get melty. Mmm, <laughs> that's perfect. Step five: draw conclusions. I conclude putting a marshmallow in the microwave is super fun and perfect for s'mores. So there's your answer. Asking questions is super fun. Speaking of which, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So, at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own Son, to live among us. Jesus gave up His life. Then, on the third day, He rose again. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly, with the help of God's Spirit. When the believers faced trouble in Jerusalem, they scattered to other places, taking the news of Jesus everywhere they went. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. Just as the religious leaders in Jerusalem hadn't understood Jesus, they also felt threatened by his followers. Many of Jesus's friends were thrown in prison. Some were even killed. But that didn't stop the new believers. They moved out from the city into Judea and Samaria. One believer, a man named Philip, began teaching about Jesus in a city in Samaria. Big crowds gathered to listen. Sick people healed through God's Spirit, and many people became believers and were baptized. There was great joy in the city, but right in the middle of this amazing work, God sent an angel to speak to Philip. Go south to the desert road. To the desert? The road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. If I was Philip, I would have been full of questions. I mean, things were going great in Samaria. Lots of people were becoming Jesus followers. So why would God want Philip to leave it all and head for the desert? I mean, the desert. There's no one here. But Philip listened to God. He started off down the lonely road into the desert, and before long, he spotted something. As Philip drew closer, he saw an Ethiopian official seated in a chariot. God's spirit told Philip, "Go to that chariot. Stay near it." Now the man in the chariot happened to be very important. In fact, he was the royal treasurer of the queen of Ethiopia. Though he was not Jewish, he believed in the one true God and had even journeyed all the way to Jerusalem to worship God there. But Though the man had loved God, he was missing a big piece of the story. 
As the official traveled home, he puzzled over some verses in the book of Isaiah, the prophet. He was led like a sheep to be killed. He did not open his mouth? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Stop the chariot. Uh, just uh, wanted to ask, uh, do you uh, understand what you're reading? How can I? I need someone to explain it to me. The Ethiopian man invited Philip to join him in the chariot and explain the scripture. How amazing is that? I mean, you can see God at work in every detail of this story. Here, uh, read this again. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off, he did not open his mouth. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. Uh, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? I am so glad you asked. What a perfect setup. Philip was able to explain that the prophet Isaiah was talking about a savior and that this savior had come. Philip shared the whole story of Jesus, how he lived, how he gave up his life for us, and how God raised him back to life. The Ethiopian official was mesmerized. He took every word to heart. As they traveled down the road, the man looked up and saw a pool of water shimmering in the distance. <laughs> Look, here is water. What can stop me from being baptized? Just a quick reminder, they're in the middle of a desert, which generally means no water. <laughs> and yet, miraculously, God brings them to an oasis at the perfect moment Philip baptized the Ethiopian in the pool of water. It was a sign that the man now believed in and was choosing to follow Jesus. As the two men came up out of the water, God's spirit suddenly whisked Philip away. The Ethiopian official must have understood that God was at work because he continued on his journey back towards Ethiopia, filled with joy. The end. Wait, what happened to Philip? Great question. We have no idea how or why God's Spirit moved him, but Philip next showed up in the coastal town of Azotus. He immediately began to tell everyone there the good news about Jesus. I love how when the Ethiopian man had big questions, God set up an amazing way for him to learn about Jesus. So, what's our part in the story? Well, just like the Ethiopian man, God welcomes our questions. When we're confused or uncertain about something, we don't need to hide it, whether it's a big question about God or a little question about a homework assignment. We can ask. You may be wondering, why is it so hard to do the right thing? God does let bad stuff happen. What do I do when my parents argue a lot? Will I be able to make friends at my new school? Why do I have to work harder than everyone else just to do okay on a test? You can take all of your questions straight to God or to a parent, or a teacher, or another trusted adult. Now, if you need help with the homework assignment, your teacher can definitely give you an answer. But you might not get your answers to your other questions, at least not right away. And that's okay, because no matter how many questions you have, or no matter how big they are, God won't get angry or annoyed with you asking. You can be confident that God will be there, right there with you, no matter what. No question about it. That's right. See you next time. So here's the thing, God is with you, even when you have questions. I have a question. Can I make two marshmallow peeps joust in the microwave? Only one way to find out. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time.
know what time it is. It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Holly and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder never ends at the Wonder Clubhouse. We miss you at the Wonder Clubhouse. We miss you. Oh, hi, friends. I'm Zoe. Guess what happened at school today? Today was Community Helpers Day, so we had a bunch of special helpers come to see us. There was a veterinarian, a librarian, a police officer, and a firefighter. And they said, kids, you can look for ways to help others too. That's what I'm doing now, looking for ways to help. Hmm, maybe I can make cookies to welcome our neighbors down the street. Or maybe I could take out the trash, even when it's not my turn. Or maybe I can leave a cold bottle of water out for the mail carrier when it's super hot outside. Hmm, what else can I do to help? Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Zoe. Who? Who? Looking for ways to help, are you? I am, Ollie. Can I help you with anything? I don't need help right now, thank you. But keep looking and you'll find someone to help. It's true. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through who? Ollie's got a Bible story for me and you. Oh, hola, friends. <laughs> I am Luis the Handyman. I was out on a walk today when I saw my friend's mailbox was broken. So, I'm going to fix it. I love looking for ways to help. That's the sign for help. Can you do it with me? Great job. Oh, that reminds me. I have an awesome story from the Bible about someone who looked for ways to help. Do you want to help me build it? Great! Let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders. Ready, uno, dos, tres, hammer. Great job, little helpers. You can put your hammers down. Now we just need our story tools. Yep, we have everything we need. Today's true story from the Bible begins with a well. A well is a deep hole in the ground where people can go to get water. People like this woman. This is Rebecca. One evening, Rebecca went to a well to get water. When she got there, she saw a man at the well with 10 camels. The man asked Rebecca if she would share her water with him. Rebecca was happy to help, and she gave him some water. But that's not all she did. She looked for other ways to help. Rebecca saw that the man had 10 camels, and they needed water too. So she got water for the camels. All 10 of them. Wow! Rebecca looked for ways to help. She helped the man and even his camels too. <gasps> Hooray for helping! <laughs> God made all of us to look for ways to help too. Where can we look for ways to help? We can look for ways to help at the park. We can look for ways to help at school. We can look for ways to help at home. We can look for ways to help everywhere. Rebecca looked for ways to help, and we can too. God made you and me to help others. 
Hooray for helping! <laughs> oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who made you to help others? God made me to help others. Yes, it's true. Now, let's hear it from you. Tell me, who made you to help others? God made me to help others. That's the truth, friends. Adios! So there is your story, and it's all true. We can look for ways to help each day. Me and you, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, God made us to help others, and we can find so many ways to help when we look. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Now, where should I look for ways to help? Oh, I know! I'll go home and see if anyone needs help there. See you next time! Bye! We have the Lord our God to help us. 2 Chronicles 32, 8. We have the Lord our God to help us. 2 Chronicles 32, 8. <laughs>